Here's a quick explanation about how to use the Thevenin circuit analysis method for this example circuit where we've got two AC sources and three impedance values in here. So you'll see all three of these impedance values are complex numbers and they're given to us in polar form to start with. What we want to end up with is a circuit like the diagram on the right where we have one voltage source and only one impedance. To get there, the first step is recognising that Z3 in the centre of the circuit is the load impedance here. So we're going to be disconnecting that to see or to create our Thevenin model circuit where we can connect any load impedance across the terminals that you see on the right side. So when we redraw the circuit with the load removed, we get something like this. I'll just put in a box here with a label of a couple of terminals. And this is where we want to find out the voltage that the circuit will produce. So when we have an open circuit in the middle here between these terminals 1 and 2, we just end up with one complete AC circuit around the outside. And our rules of AC circuits tells us that the current that flows it will be the voltage difference divided by the total impedance. So you can see that equation that we've got here. Now if you're careful with using your complex numbers, and if your calculator is very smart, that will definitely help you here. Or if you have a basic calculator, you'll just need to do some conversions between polar form and rectangular form to be able to solve that. And we know that here the current is going to be flowing from right to left, simply because we have a higher voltage on the right hand side and a lower voltage on the left side. So the next step, once you've calculated how much current is flowing, is to look at the voltage that we will actually measure between these terminals 1 and 2. So that voltage is going to be a little bit less than the 12 volts that's produced by our source on the right side. And the voltage drop across Z2 will tell us how much less. So if we do a quick calculation using our complex numbers again, take the voltage from voltage source number 2 and subtract the volt drop across impedance Z2, that's going to give us a complex number answer, which is our Thevenin voltage. So going back to our original circuit, our Thevenin voltage goes in here. So that's half of the solution. Going back down the page, the second part of our solution is to find the Thevenin impedance. The first step here is to get rid of the voltage sources. So these are perfect voltage sources or ideal sources where they have zero internal impedance so we can replace them with a short circuit. When we do that and we're looking into the circuit from these terminals 1 and 2 as if we are going to connect a new source into here and we want to know how much impedance will there be in the circuit when this new source tries to inject some current into the circuit. So you can imagine the, this new current going through the wire up to the junction and then from the junction it has two parallel paths either going left through Z1 or going right through Z2. So that means we can do a quick calculation with parallel impedances. So either you can do 1 over 1 impedance plus 1 over the other impedance and then do 1 over your answer or you can multiply the two impedances and divide by the sum of the impedances. Either way you should get to the same answer as a complex number for the impedance. And that solution goes into our diagram here. That will be our Thevenin impedance. Once we've got this model circuit, it means that we can connect any impedance that we like between the open terminals and we'll be able to very quickly solve a series circuit to find out how much current and voltage will be in that circuit. So there's a quick run through about how to use the method for a Thevenin circuit analysis for an AC circuit. Hope that's been helpful for you.